Hey Jam, so I learned a massive lesson a couple of years ago. When everyone is looking left, look right. Now that is what I'm seeing in the market right now. Over the past three months, I've added nearly 1,000 creators into my school community, Creator Launch University. And what I'm seeing is everyone's obsessed with short form organic content and low ticket products and services. And the question is, should you be too? So in today's video, I'm going to show you the eight systems that I'm planning on using to grow my business past 100K per month on school and how if you want to, you can steal my plans and do the same. And the spoiler alert is it's not by doing what everyone else is doing right now. I found that it's critical you have to pay attention to what the big hitters are actually saying. And there's not a bigger hitter pairing in the online business world right now than the dream team duo of Alex Hormozzi and Sam Ovens, the co-founders of School. And yeah, Hormozzi's official title is now co-founder. And because I have my own school community, I've had access to some of the private content from both of them and I've been taking notes. So here's what Alex Hormozzi has been saying about overall strategy like the the power combo is organic following run ads where it gets really juicy is that all of your content is only give and then the ads are the ask so then you don't have to balance a give to ask ratio you just only give in content and then the ads serve to be the CTA. And for whatever reason, it protects the brand. It's a totally different vibe. And this is what Sam Ovens thinks is gonna be the three biggest areas that you need to focus on to build your online business. I really think that the future of info involves three things. The first one is the people who are in the future, they're, they're gonna be masters of YouTube organic. And that's where they're gonna get their traffic. And that's the traffic machine. Cause you know, to make money as a creator on the internet, you need traffic. Ads are kind of getting more expensive, tracking's getting more and more sketchy, right? And it's always just a pain in the ass. And the YouTubers seem to really have the key to this. So I think in the future, you know, it's gonna be YouTubers that really have this figured out. It's gonna be YouTube organic. So figuring out how to get all of your traffic in reach organically. It's gonna be about selling high ticket courses and masterminds, which is your product machine, your thing to sell to the people that you're building in your audience and setters and closers, which is your conversion machine, your mechanism of converting people from you know, a viewer or a subscriber to a high ticket paying customer. Now, keep in mind that these two nerds made their initial wealth in pretty much the same way with Gym Launch and Consulting.com. One, they mastered paid advertising. Two, they sold high ticket programs. And then three, they used community marketing. This is how they became infamous. It was this formula. And transparently, this is the formula I'm planning to use too. So in today's video, I'm going to break down my exact plan on how I'm going to use school as part of my business model to make over 100k per month. And I hope you're ready for some British Asian spice, you sons of bitches. Let's get into it. Right champs, this is the eight systems that you need to scale a high ticket creator business. AKA, this is the growth infrastructure that you need. So if you're ready, ready to get after it, let's get after it. Okay, so who the hell am I? Like, why should you listen to me? First up, you shouldn't, never listen to me. But I am the founder of Creator Launch. I am on a mission to help a million creators, very good round number, to find their purpose, uncover their mission, break free, make their impact, and unlock their true potential. And why am I doing all this? Because frankly, this is what I'm trying to do for myself. I'm trying to do all this. I'm trying to find my purpose, which I feel like I have done. I'm trying to uncover my mission, which I feel like I have done. I feel like I'm trying to break free, which I'm partially there. I feel like I want to make an impact. I ain't nowhere near this one. And I want to unlock my true potential, which is, yeah, again, I'm nowhere near that. So I'm just trying to help myself out. So this video is actually trying to help myself from a couple of years ago. You may find this useful, you may not, but again, who the hell am I? So I'm a former cosmetic dentist. I used to specialize in cosmetic dentistry 10 full years ago now, 10 years. I know that means nothing to you, but that means something to me because it's my life. Um, feels like a lifetime ago. The truth is it was a lifetime ago. I have lived a hell of a life since then, had a lot of fun. And this is some of the stuff that I've done. This is the boring stuff, actually. This is the stuff that I can't talk about. Um, or the stuff that I can talk about, not the stuff that I can't talk about, which is the fun stuff. So I've been a digital consultant to enterprise brands, Chanel, Virgin, Urban Outfitters, Selfridges, Harrods, every place where you get all your all your stuff, every every stuff, the, everything that you wear and smell like. If you could smell me, you'd know that I smell incredible. I've worked with those companies. I used to help them make their websites and their apps perform way better than they did. 
And that was my job, to work with their teams, help them do that stuff. Um, I've also done an enterprise software sales. So I've worked in kind of an appointment setting role initially. I've also worked in sales roles and I've also done consulting roles for that type of stuff. Um, so I've done a lot of sales, I've been doing sales for 10 years. I was doing sales as a dentist and then all through my multiple other careers that I've done. And especially when I was an SMMA agency owner. So I co co ran, co owned an agency that's still going actually. Um, and at the time when I left, we were doing 40K per month and I moved on to continue what we were doing, which was helping creators grow their businesses. So we, that's what I'm still focused on. Been focused on growing communities online for a couple of years now. I have my first membership community where I was charging 500 bucks a month. People were paying me that. Uh, that was like two years ago now, two full years since I was doing that. And I've been helping businesses grow communities online, using community platforms, growing their social media presence. So I've been living and breathing this world for a while now. And I've also been a freelance growth consultant. So I did this last year for a little bit. I worked at the pap at Paperboy Studios, which is a newsletter agency co-owned by Sahil Bloom, who's one of the biggest creators in the world, just recently started on YouTube. And yeah, I was helping some of the biggest creators in the world with their growth strategies for their newsletters, which included stuff like paid ads, included um, referrals, included partnerships with other creators, um, spe specializing in ConvertKit. So we're using ConvertKit, the platform, which is where I have my my newsletter. That's where I host my newsletter. So I was helping um, helping some of the biggest creators, some of the coolest creators build their newsletters, which was sick. I learned a ton there. Okay, let's see if this works. So what do I do now? Well, I run Creator Launch and we do a few things, but the main thing we have is our growth infrastructure program. This is a 12 month infrastructure program where we help online coaches, consultants, freelancers, agency owners. The truth is, is this model works for anyone that is wanting to grow revenue or build their business online. It's and the reason why is because it's fucking simple. So we do this using our attraction and authority flywheel. I personally believe this is the most evergreen, simplest way to build a business online. And I don't see this changing for a while, to be honest. Like this just makes the most sense. So how do we do it? So we run one simple ad on Instagram. We have one video breakdown, which we host on our YouTube channel. And we have one community, which we have on school. This is the, the process that I'm running. This is the model that I'm doing. And... Yeah, um, frankly, I'll show you my targets and what I'm aiming to hit, uh, where my goals and milestones are going to be, but I'm aiming to take this quite far. This is kind of a little bit of a breakdown. We'll get into this in more detail, and I've got other videos that go into all of these different segments in more detail, but for today's purpose, let's go through this. So we run one simple ad. That's our OSA protocol, which helps drive qualified, perfect fit leads to our Instagram profile, and we get them to follow us. So these people follow us. So what, what happens is we grow our personal brand audience with perfect fit leads at the same time as getting leads. Tell me that is not sick. Tell me that's not sick. It is sick. What we do is we then connect with them. So we connect with them through messages. You can have an appointment setter, which is what we coach when you get to a certain level. And then you nurture them through a series of different mechanisms. One is through a video sales letter. The other is through sales assets because You've got to remember when 100 people follow you, only one person might be at that time ready to work with you. The other 99 don't know who the hell you are, don't know what the hell, they, hell you do. And why would they know? Why would they like and trust you enough to work with you? So you need to nurture them and you need to warm them up over a series of months, maybe even years before people trust you enough to work with you. And that is what this attraction and authority flywheel does. It builds your pipeline at the same time as building your audience, which is super sick. So what we do, once people are nurtured and they're actually like feeling like they want to work with you, they book a call. So you get them on a call, you turn them into a client. And the most important thing is that you get results with those clients and you build them into sales assets and you deliver those sales assets through YouTube, through Spotify, which is what I do. I do YouTube and Spotify and also school. And this video you're watching right now is an example of a sales asset because I've got results. So these are just some of our recent results from some of our students. 
Felipe, for example, just closed his first 10K offer. This dude I've been working with for a while now, and he quit his nine to five, got his first clients, moved to Brazil, living on a ranch within Brazil, and he's now grown a his high ticket offer into a sophisticated offer to help people grow their audiences with podcasts. And now he's charging 10 to 15K for his offer. Uh, ben helped him grow his tech consultancy to 40K a month in six months, which is pretty sick. Um, Stephen recently just joined and signed his first client for 5K for his relationship coaching business. Again, super sick. These guys all have really great uh, uh, social media presences and are starting to use the process that we teach. And Austin, again, another great example. He did $62,000 in sales for one of his launches, uh, working as a growth consultant, which is, again, I mean, come on, come on, 62 sale, 62K in a month on his first launch. So anyway, that's why you need results. And then you feed those results into assets like this, which you're going to watch. So um, yeah, this is an example of me doing what I'm talking about. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so first up, let's have a bit of a disclaimer here. And I'm going to be real with you here right now. And I'm saying this knowing that what I'm going to say here, it might potentially scare some of you off from potentially working with me. But I don't want to work with you if you get scared by this. So if this, if I'm what I'm about to show you over the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, however long this, this sucker takes, I don't want to work with you if you're scared by this. If you're scared by this, because most business coaches, they're going to tell you how easy it's going to be. They're going to tell you, you just need to do a few things and boom, your business will be thriving. But it's bullshit. It is bullshit. Entrepreneurship is hard as fuck. And if you want to win, you need to know the truth. And the truth is you have a lot of work to do. You have a lot of work to do to compete in the online world. Now, it is a competition. You have got kids, teenagers making tens of thousands of dollars a, a week. I've seen case studies of this because these kids have been watching business YouTube videos since they were 10. So how, how can you expect to compete if you don't do a lot of hard work? So in today's video, I'm just going to show you the minimum viable systems you need to build to compete with these teenagers. <laughs> and the good news is this isn't rocket science. It just takes effort, time and consistency. So you can do it, but it starts with the first system. So let's get into it. Okay, first system. The hunger system. The first system is the hunger system. And what this system is, this is the how bad do you actually want it system. Because I speak to people all the time who say they want it. <laughs> and they don't. They don't. They don't because they're, they're, what comes out of their mouth doesn't doesn't match their actions. They don't commit. They don't change. They don't do the work. So how bad do you actually want it? And you need to build a system around this. This is what I have. So you need to get clear on your vision of what your dream future in 10 years time looks like. You need to paint that picture in your head. You need to build a vision of what this looks like. Where are you going to be living? Who are you going to be living with? What does your family look like? What, 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 what does your home look like? Is it an apartment? Is it a house? Like you need to get clear on these things. What are the objects that you have? And once you've done that, you need to start thinking about the feelings of what it feels like to already be that person. That is the key thing that people don't understand when it comes to this type of stuff, otherwise known as manifestation. So you need to get clear on your one-year goals. You need to get clear on your quarterly goals. You need to get clear on your monthly goals. You need to write down your one-year goals every single day so you get reminded. I have them on my desk next to me written down. So I look at them whilst I'm looking at you. And when I talk about people who you're going to have to compete with, you're competing with people like me who have their fucking goals written down on their desks. So you have to get serious about this stuff. So write down your one-year goals every single day. And this is a really, really, really key thing. Write down your 10 monthly goals, the 10 things that you want to do this month every single morning. What you do is you get your notebook and you write them down and you write them down and you do not refer to when you wrote them down yesterday. You have to get them into your, you have to plug them into your subconscious mind. 
And you do that by making sure you think coherently about what, what you want to achieve this month. And then what happens once you do that every single day, they become a subconscious thought. And then your subconscious thinks about how the hell you're going to get to those goals whilst you're sleeping, whilst you're not even conscious, subconscious. That's the whole point. So you need to get these written down every single morning. The first thing that you do needs to be writing down your 10 monthly goals every single morning. And I built a system. For, I built an actual system for this. I write my goals down on my on my journal, but I but I also journal in my creator OS system that I built. So I was looking for something that could help me with my practice for how to set goals. So I built it. And I have a goal section where I write down my five-year goals, my one-year goals, and my current goals, my quarter goals. And then I build my goals into projects. So I have momentum building projects that I focus on every year and every quarter. And I review these every single quarter and every single month. And the great news for you is that this is free. There's going to be a link for you to download. It's Create OS Notion Dashboard. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people use it now. And I've had heard like only got, got incredible feedback from it. It's free. So you can either choose to use it or not. I use this thing every single day. I have my vision board on it. I have my goals. I have my projects. I have my revenue tracking. I have my content calendar. I have everything. This is my, this is the system that runs my life and my business. You can take it if you want. Okay, second up, you need a belief system. You need a system that turns you into a different human. You need a system that turns you into a different human. So the person you are now, right now, it is you are not capable of doing the things that you are going to be doing in 10 years time. So how are you going to get there? Okay, first up, you need to read this book. It's called Psycho-Cybernetics and it is the most important book I've ever read. And I read it, I'm constantly rereading it. Constantly rereading. It's always on my bedside table. Always rereading it. You need to also listen to Reality Transurfing. And I'll show you in a second where you can get access to that. And you need to create a vision board. I have it on my Creator OS and I look at it every single day. I also do affirmations. So I have a list of affirmations that I go through. Again, if you want to get, if you want to see the process that I go through, download Creator OS. I have a system for you to do this yourself. And you then need to highlight the people that you want to be like. So who are the people that are living this life that you really want to have? Who are they? And you need to understand what are their skills? What do they know that you don't know? What are the character traits that they have that you don't have? And what are the beliefs that they have that you don't have? And you need to set st new standards for your life. You need to set new standards for your life. And you need to become the person that you are incapable of being doing the things that you are doing right now. This person was me a year and a half ago, two years ago, and incapable of doing the things that I am doing right now. You know, last night I went out or yesterday I, I went to the gym. It was a Saturday yesterday. So I'm filming this on Sunday. So again, two years ago, was would I be doing this type of stuff on a Sunday? No, no, I wasn't. What I was doing on a Sunday was I was hungover after having nine, 10, 11 pints on Saturday night, the same on a Friday night. And when I walked to the gym yesterday, it was probably about 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And everyone was out where I go. It's like quite a busy area where everyone starts going out on a Saturday. And everyone was getting ready for their afternoon session of drinking nine pints of whatever the fuck, 15 Jaeger bombs, 12 Sambucas, three Cosmopolitans, four espresso martinis, keep going, son, have one. And they were. And every single one, as I was walking on the way to the gym to put a two-hour workout in on a Saturday afternoon, everyone had a vape. So addicted to nicotine, addicted to alcohol. And the truth is, that is me, that was me. When I looked like this, I was sucking on vapes all day. I was drinking eight pints every night. I was drinking every night. That person was incapable of being the person that I am now. So I'm different. So I've, I've turned this into a course because this is so fundamental. If you do not have this new belief system, if you don't have a way of becoming a different person, then you're fucked. You literally will not, you won't get to your dreams. So I turned this into a course 
and it's in Creator Launch University. If you want access to it, you can either get it like in a second, I'll show you, like you can get it for free or you can join my community. There's there's two ways you can get it. I'll show you in a second. And then you need to do reality, reality transurfing. You need to re either read the book. I mean, there's actually tons of books. There's loads of books. The better option is to just listen to the audio book on YouTube and this will change your life. Hands down. Okay, so those are the belief systems that you need. Now, you need to understand that your business is a pipe. Now, shout out to Charlie Morgan, who's one of my favorite creators who I stole this idea from, but he showed how your the flow of people through your business is like the flow of people through a pipe. And there are three main this kind of delivery mechanisms uh, or systems within your business pipeline. There's the acquisition system, there's the conversion system, and there's the delivery value system. We're going to break those down in a second, how I do them. And every single one of these systems has a micro step, a mini system that within the system. This is what you need to build. Every single one of these little tiny little pipe sections is what you need to build. And this is how you need to do it. Okay, let's go next. So the first system that you need to build for your business is actually the value delivery system. You actually need to get people results because if you can't get people results, there is no point doing sales and marketing to tell people that you're going to get them results that you can't get for people. So you need to get good at getting results. I'm going to show... I, the only way I know how to do this is show you what I do to get results with my business. And you need to figure out how to do the same. And if you are just starting on your journey, you do this by working for free. You work for free. That's how I got my first jobs. I worked for free. And you need to demonstrate value by working for someone, getting results for free. That's what you need to do. So how do you get results? You need to provide everything that someone needs to succeed. So the way I do it, we have different resources. We have standard operating procedures. We have playbooks for our students to follow. We have training videos. We have client success milestones and tracking. So we need to know where a client is on their journey and where are the different milestones that we can check off to say, okay, well done, you've made it to this stage. We now need to do a bunch of other work to get you to this stage. Those are the milestones and we need to track those milestones. I'll show you how I do it. You need a wins database. You need a wins database. You need to collect wins because you need to know what is working and what isn't working. You need to know that you're actually doing, like the stuff that you're doing actually works. So you need to collect data about wins. And it helps you understand where there are other bottlenecks, where where people are getting held up if they're not winning. You need to be able to understand this. So wins can be, they can be anything. They can be small micro step wins. They can be uh, checking milestones off. Wins can be anything, but you need to collect them and you need to track them and you need to build a database that you can refer to. Okay, what's up? KPIs and reporting. You need to have key performance indicators. At least this is what I have. Key performance indicators for your clients to know that they are actually moving in the right direction and you need to track them so that you can help course correct them. You need to be able to say, okay, well, this number is good. This number is good. This number is good. This number is not great. This number is good. This number is not great. And you need to say, well, we need to focus on refining this part of the pipe to ensure that this isn't constraining the flow of people through your business. And then you need to work on improving that area of the pipe. And you do that through KPIs and reporting. Next up, you do that through, a, you get results through accountability. You get people doing the work by holding them accountable. And you've got various different mechanisms you can do this. You can do this coaching or consulting, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group. You can do peer group, which is what we do. We have accountability pods as well as one-on-one. -on -one. And we have our private community. So we have a community of other people all doing the same stuff, moving in the same direction to hold each other accountable. And you can do Q and A's. And these are some of the mechanisms. These are some of the, res the success mechanisms that we use, I use to help get results. So we have playbooks. So these are standard operating procedures that our students can literally take, pull out and plug into their business. 
And these are a bunch of different things, whether they are exercises, worksheets, uh, kind of like checklist things. These are the, this is the infrastructure. This is taking the playbooks, giving it to them, and then getting to be able to in, input it into their business. We've then got trainings on this. So these are all of our modules, our training modules, which are videos that I've made to help educate our clients on how to do things. How do we track things? We have a student success tracker. So this is a dashboard system that we use to track exactly what our students have done when it comes to their education. So have they done the education side element of what we do, which is you know lear learning and teaching themselves how to do certain things? Are they doing that? Then we have a, this is the, the pipeline build. So this is the actual infrastructure. So exactly the steps and the things that they need to build to grow their business and all of the trainings for them to be able to do each of the steps. Then we have accountability. Like I said, we have what we what I call accelerator pods. These are when I group together a bunch of similar entrepreneurs at the similar, similar kind of stage, struggling with similar things and get them working together to increase the speed of their the cadence of how much work they get done. This is peer pressure, forced peer pressure, and it works so damn well. I don't see any other, other other groups doing this, to be honest, any other programs doing this. And I took this from when I was at university and I went from being at the bottom of my year group when I was at dental school to being at the top because I just surrounded myself with a core group of other other guys who are trying to do the same thing. And so I've taken that philosophy and I've put that into Creator Launch. Then we've got tracking. So these are tracking sheets. This is our Instagram, kind of like uh, our ads tracking sheet that we have. And this is our KPIs dashboard that we use. So every month students come in here and they fill out their core KPIs. And this is how I can help course correct them. Because I can look at these different metrics and say, okay, well, this number is really low. This is not a where, where our benchmark is. We need to improve this. So we've got all of those mechanisms. So that is the value delivery system. Next, we have a client attraction system. So this is you needing to attract people to you. You need to automate the process of getting relevant people to see your stuff for the first time. So we do this with the Attraction and Authority Flywheel. We build this model. So first up, we have our one simple ad protocol. That is how we get our lead generation. So you can go to my Instagram and you can see all the different videos that the one, a lot of the ones that have got really high views, apart from a couple that have gone viral, are the ones that we're pushing as boosted ads. So this is where we call out people who are ideal fit and we say, hey, if you are this person and you're struggling with X, Y, and Z, and you want to get to A, B, and C, I want you to follow me here on Instagram and go through all of my content because I'm going to help you get to X, Y, and Z. I want to, I want to get help you get there. And the reason this works is because instead of traditional ads where you're asking someone to buy someone, something from you, you're asking for something way less, which is just a follow. And people will do that because a follow costs nothing. It's one tap. So it is. this is why this system works so, so, so well, because we're not asking people to buy from us straight up. We're asking people just to follow us and find out more about us. It's super natural and ironically, an organic way to get people to follow you. But we're just doing it which using the cheat code, which is paid paid advertising. And we do this through boosting. So super simple. I have a bunch of ads running at the same time. And this is how we structure the ads. So you need to call out who you serve, how they currently feel, the outcome that they desire, the unique mechanism you have used to get their desired outcome, why it's different to other things that they've tried, the timeline they can expect to achieve results, what makes you an authority and a call to action, which is to follow me. So this is just a snapshot taken from one of our playbooks. And this is just an example script of you know what, what one of our ads looks like. So I'll let you pause this and read it if you want to, but you can just go and see my ads. Like go go look at my ads and be able to see exactly how, it, how I'm doing it. The ads aren't, ad scripting ain't the, hard, ain't the hard part, okay? The hard part is doing all the other stuff. So tracking benchmark KPIs, for example. So it's things like target daily ad spend, cost per profile visit, cost per follow, cost per inbound DM, cost per book call, number of inbound DMs from CTAs, number of new conversations, return on ad spend, cost per acquisition. And we track this through a spreadsheet. So we have all of these metrics tracked in a spreadsheet. 
So that's how we do that. That's our client attraction system. Sorry, that is a, hang on a sec, what's going on here? Client attraction system. Okay, that is, yeah, so that is our client attraction system. And then you need lead magnets. So next up is we have lead magnets. So we have a number of different lead magnets. I've got my Creator OS Notion dashboard. So this is a system that, you know, we use to help transform the lives of our ideal customers. So what can you build? What system can you build that's going to help really transform the lives of your ideal customer? So for me, I built Create OS because that was something I was looking for. And turns out it's helped loads of other people as well. So there was a lot of work I put in. That was three years of refining and building this thing. But after, like once it's done, it's done. It's done. And so I use this as a lead magnet. I then use my school community, which you can either have as free or paid. Mine was initially free at the start. And now I've made it into a payment gated. It's like 29 bucks a month at the moment as, as of filming this. And that's really just so that I make sure that the people who join are going to do the work and actually contribute to the community. And I think this, I personally think this is a better way to build a community on school is to start off low, low ticket and just start building perfect fit people. It's a slower way to build, but I think it's a more effective way than just having a free community where people just come in. The people who want stuff for free, these are people that are never going to buy from you anyway. Now, that's the one thing that I've realized is that people who get free, who want, look for free shit, they never buy from you. So, and then third is like, can you get a course? Can you build a course that's going to help people and give it away for free? I've given away for given it away for free. It's accessible in Creator Launch University and I've added it to YouTube. So you can go and see the six and a half hour course for free. So you can come and get it, access it through Creator Launch University or you can get it for free here. But this is extreme amounts of free value that I'm giving away. And then newsletter. So I have a newsletter again, which I like promote occasionally. I do once a week and people can sign up for that. I've also used previously things like email mini courses. So this is, I had the Solopreneur launch sequence course that I used to use. This is what I had before I had Creator OS, but Creator OS is way, way, way better. But this was a seven, seven day daily email course, just taking people through my, the seven biggest things that I teach. So the seven modules that I have in my Creator launch course, I turned into an email and I was using this. Um, so that really worked really well. Okay, right. Next up, we've got our client acquisition system. So this is where you need to nurture, educate, and build reciprocity, otherwise known as goodwill, over weeks, months, and years so they trust you enough to work with you. And this is the, again, the attract, attraction and authority flywheel. This is the benefit of this method. So first up, we do omnipresent content retargeting. So this is where we run retargeting ads at $1 per day per ad, really cheap to warm audiences, Instagram 365 day engagers, Instagram 365 day followers, and our email list. That is the only, those are the warm audiences. I'm changing my, um, currently in the process of migrating my my website. So I would add my website visitors to this as well. Uh, but right now it's not, but I would add that. If you have that, if it, you've got tracking on your website, uh, you just need to install the Facebook pixel onto your website, then you can have that as well. And this is how I do things. I have four categories of ads. So we've got proof ads. So these are testimonials. Important not to have videos because Facebook doesn't like that anymore. Um, they will just take it down. Carousels, quotes, case studies. Then we've got lead magnets. So free downloads, community newsletter, the stuff like Create OS for me. And then thesis video. Like th this is like me explaining what I teach, which is what I'm teaching in this video breaking that down in a short video reel. Uh, carousels as well are a great way to do that. So I then I have call to action links to YouTube videos. So I try and direct my Instagram traffic to my YouTube. And this has been working super, super, super well. The amount of clicks I'm getting on my uh, ad Instagram adverts that are shunting people over from Instagram to YouTube has been mega. And the best thing about this is this, this you get super cheap reach to people who are who already know you. And the reason this works is because when you just rely on organic content, you've got to remember that your organic content is only going to get seen by about 5% of your existing audience. So let's say, for example, you have 10,000 followers on Instagram. Your content's only going to get seen by maybe like maybe a thousand if you're lucky. So like it doesn't get seen by most and you can cheat the system 
by paying not that much money like literally i pay i spend like 10 15 bucks a day to get my content seen by everyone that follows me and is seeing my stuff so i can really warm people up and so what happens is each one of these gets only seen by people once every seven days so i have 14 videos set up so everyone sees two videos or two pieces of content on a cycle of mine per day so it gets cycled through so it's not that much it's literally two pieces of content everyone sees uh per day and they get cycled through different styles of content so it doesn't get annoying for my audience so these are videos carousels um stories super super awesome way to keep and nurture your or your new audience okay next up we've got the youtube reciprocity bank and sales assets now first up you need your main video sales letter as featured on your video channels so you need to to pin it as your featured video on your your youtube channel and you need to create a load of valuable content talking about the stuff that you help people with to show that you're an authority doing what I'm doing. And you can do it in loads of different styles. You can do them in YouTube video styles. You can do them in presentations like this. You can do them Canva whiteboards like I've used. Uh, you can just speak to the camera, literally just like raw, just like speak. You can have a whiteboard up, like an actual physical whiteboard. You can do whatever the hell you want. Have fun with it. I like mixing it up. I polled my community recently. I asked, what is it? What stuff do you, what style do you prefer? Turns out they just like a mix. So I'm going to give them a mix. Okay, then we've got, this is the actual sales asset framework that I use and we teach. So first up, what is a sales asset? Well, it's a piece of content that simultaneously at the same time generates traffic and converts traffic by showcasing your skills, your expertise, your story, your passion, your knowledge, building reciprocal equity with your audience and critically shifting beliefs to align with yours. So the aim of this video is to show you there is other ways to do things. I personally think my way is the best. I'm absolutely happy to say that you can win with loads of other ways. People are winning with loads of other ways, but I personally love the way I'm doing things because I think it works incredibly well and is, has the lowest barrier to entry of the skills that you need to get this to work. You know, as opposed to things like cold DMing or cold email where you need to you need to figure out tons of different like systems and you're constantly fighting against people trying to do the same thing it doesn't work very well this is the simple sales asset framework that we use so first up you need to remind people of your story this is something that people don't miss out and that's why i always start every single video with a short kind of just reminder for new people that follow me remember youtube is the second biggest search engine outside of google so people are going to find you organically on youtube you need to remind them you need to tell them as if you're they're seeing you for the first time now the people who are already in your audience they don't mind that they might just skip ahead they'll be like oh, i've heard this a million times who gives a fuck but you need to tell people every single time you you show up to these things remind them who you are and give them some proof of why they should listen to you on when they watch your video so you then need to clarify the problem. So what is the problem that you help and you need help solve and expand on the symptoms of this problem, elaborate on how the symptoms can negatively affect the life of the prospect, clarify the feature used to solve the problem, share the benefits of solving the problem, share the effects of the benefits of solving the problem. Now, some of these things that I haven't gone into in, in this much detail in this, in this video, for example, I haven't gone into the details of like how trying doing cold dms instead of like running ads is going to negatively impact your life because what i've done is i've shown you the proof by showing you the clip of hormozy and sam ovens telling you this is the way to do things so i don't need to talk to you about the negative stuff you know you know you know you don't want to be doing stuff that doesn't work so i'm showing you the stuff that does work okay then we've got the video sales letter framework this is a much more in-depth framework for how we structure video sales letters you can use this if you want now, I call this the 11 P's, and this is quite simply how we structure our video sales letters. So first up, you need a pattern interrupt. You need to get people's attention, grab people's attention because everyone has the attention span of a rat these days from TikTok, and you need to grab their attention. Um, you can do this in a number of different ways. You can tell a joke, you can tell, you can, you can use a visual aid, you can do loads of different things. You need a pattern interrupt. You then need to make a promise. You need to give them a promise of what is the person gonna get if they stay to the end of the video you then need to give the proof of why they should listen to you your credibility 
you then you can then expand on the promise so expand on like the promise we have a worksheet in create in, in launch called sell the vacation so this is where we go into detail and depth of what does it mean for someone to work with you where do they want to get to what is the vision of the dream island that they want to arrive at and what is the vacation what does it feel like for them when they get there you know no one wants to think about the plane ride like this video that I'm showing you is the plane ride. I'm showing you the plane ride, but no one fucking wants to know about the plane ride. They they don't want to think about waking up at 4 a.m., having to pack their bag the day before, having to scroll like crawl around the house trying to look for extens extensions and like plug like travel adapters to be able to plug their stuff in. They don't want to look for their sun cream. They want to arrive at their destination and they want to know what the feeling is they want to be reminded of the feeling of the warm sand underneath their feet and they want to they want to be reminded of the feeling of that first sip of that pina colada when they're looking out into the sunset and you have to figure out what that messaging is to be able to articulate it in videos and on sales calls so you need to have the promise then we've got the path this is the new opportunity. For me, in this instance, the new opportunity is the attraction and authority flywheel. And this is what you're currently not doing, which I'm doing, which I'm saying is better than what you're doing that isn't working. You then need to give your personal journey. So this is your story, how, it, how you went from being here to being at their dream vacation. And you need to tell, how, tell them what that story is. And the reason you do that is so that you are relatable. And um, being relatable is the biggest, easiest and simplest way to get someone to like you. This is why I drop in small little things like small little anecdotes, small stories to help you get to feel like I'm relatable to you. OK, then we've got path expansion. These are the steps that this, that someone needs to take to get them the results. These are the different individual steps that they need to take. You then need to go into the problems. These are the other problems that they have but they can't currently solve. So these are things that they don't, they can't even envisage the problems that they're going to have. And this video is a great example of that. Like I'm showing you a bunch of stuff that you probably haven't even thought about when trying to build your business. And that that is why I have like launched. That's why we have the growth infrastructure program, because there are dozens and dozens of micro steps and questions that you probably don't even know you need to ask. And I give you the answers. I get, literally give you the answers to put them into your business. Next, we've got pillars. So these are the core pillars of your product. Now, again, we've got another pit, we've got another playbook that helps dive into what these pillars are and how to present them and what they what they actually mean. But these are simply like the core ways that someone is going to go from A to B. You know, example for me, my pillars are the offer. So making sure that you're actually selling something that is not built on a foundation of sand that is robust that gets results the next is like an attraction mechanism that helps bring people to you the next is personal brand and then the final one is sales those are the main core pillars of my business and then there's process so how are the put how are the pillars fulfilled by you so these are the actual this is like how do you actually deliver this and if you go back to my value the value delivery part this is what i like all of those things, those are the pro that's the process. That's how I deliver my stuff. And then finally, in the VSL, you got to talk about the penalty. Like, what is the consequence of them not making a change? And the consequence is they stay the same and they keep going on the same path, which is they've been on for years and they've never made a change and they stay on that path until they're on their deathbed and they think they lie back and they're full of regret. That is the consequence of not changing. Okay, so that's the VSL. And that is our client acquisition system. Okay, trying to remember all these at the same time. Right, next up, we've got client conversion system. So you then need to convert your audience into customers. So the number one is an appointment setting framework. Now, this is you being able to get someone from the DMs into onto a sales call. So really key understanding here is the more calls you book, the more money you're going to make. Very key, simple equation, maybe the simplest equation in your business. More calls booked, more money made. 
So there are a number, people get this wrong. There's, there is one primary objective of appointment setting. That is to book them onto strategy calls, sales calls, get them to watch the VSL on your landing page as a prerequisite to getting on the call, getting them on the call. And then there's a bunch of secondary objectives of appointment setting. So number one is connection. So actually connecting with new audience members so they feel connected. Number two is asking questions about what they're currently doing, why they followed and what their dream goals, dreams and goals are. Three is to guide them, like guide them on their journey, like share useful resources. So I've got a bunch of YouTube videos that I send people links to and guide them over to my YouTube channel. The fourth secondary objective is to convert convert them into an owned email list. You can do this either via new newsletter signups, lead magnets, free courses, free tools, free communities, do whatever the hell you like, but convert them into something that you own and not just rent, which is what you have when you have an audience on a social media platform. Then we want to track and report. So track key performance indicators so that we can make informed strategic decisions. And then like we want to actually book these people onto calls. So we have a DM workflow structure that we use made up of three phases. Phase one is the connection phase, and there's only one aim. The only aim is to get a response. So get a response, that's phase one. Phase two is the discovery phase, and the aim for this is to build leverage. What that means is build enough information where it makes it logical for the final thing to do to offer and propose a call. Let me say that again. Building leverage is getting enough information from the person that you're speaking to and building enough information to the point where it is logical for you to propose getting on a call with them. There is no point just saying, hey, nice to meet you. You want to jump on a call? No, it doesn't make sense. That's not logical. You want to build a relationship and nurture this person to the point where they are going to be like, yeah, actually, call makes total sense. Let's jump on a call. So this is a problem that this is... People make this mistake of just jumping in too early and offering a call when it doesn't make sense. So it needs to make sense. So you do this by getting information about their background. What are they currently working on? What is their current situation? You then ask discovery questions, things about their offer, things about what they're struggling with. This is if you're, if you're a business offer, by the way, but this is just for me. But like, what do you want to get to know about them? You know, maybe they're trying to, you know, you help them with weight loss, like where they're currently at with their weight loss journey. Are they, are they happy with how things are going? Then we want to ask about their desired situation. We want to learn about their challenges and we want to uncover some sort of pain. This isn't necessary. We don't need to go dive and like dig deep and dig deep into trying to hunt for pain. We just want to build enough leverage where it then is logical to transition to a call. And so guess what? The aim of this phase is to pitch a call. <laughs> And the objective is we're trying to get them on a call and get them to do that. So we do this in like nine steps. So step one is get a response. One of the key metrics to this is speed to lead. So the shorter you can get in between them following you to you messaging them, if you can get this within beneath two minutes, the higher the response rate is going to be, the higher everything, everything else in your pipeline is going to be. So speed to lead is really important. Step two is discovery. You need to learn their situation, send them appropriate resources, start warming them up, making them feel, okay, yeah, this this makes sense. This guy's really helpful. This person's really helpful. Step three is offer the call. Step four is offer two options within the next 48 hours. Really important not to give them options further than that because if you go longer than two days, they're gonna forget about you. They're gonna be like, wait, why? who the hell is this guy? Why am I on a call with this person? It needs to be within two days. So you really need to book them in within two days. You can ask them for their email address. You can send them the Calendly link. It depends on how warm it is. Like if you can feel like there, there's eagerness for them to jump on a call, just send them your Calendly link and only have call options within the next two days. Um, and if they say, oh, have you got any, like, how about like next week or the end of next week? Uh, try and force them into jumping on a call in, in the next two days and yeah, if you need to book them a little bit later, but you're going to need to be on it when it comes to follow up. And I would say if, if someone says I can only meet in a week's time, uh, you need to be sending the messages every couple of days with um, uh, like a, something that's going to help them, a video, a podcast, something to keep that 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 uh, the flow of that message warm so that they actually remember, OK, yeah, this person's actually trying to help me and they will actually get on a call in a week's time. 
but ideally you need to get them within 48 hours. Um, and then, yeah, then you need to get them to watch the video sales letter if they haven't already, if you haven't already sent them to them, just ask for a favor, say, hey, can you do me a quick favor before I call? And they'll say, yeah, sure. Then you send them a video, you just say, hey, do you mind just watching this quick video? If you give it a watch, you'll know exactly what I do and who I am. And it means that we can actually spend time answering your questions instead of you asking me. Okay, and then really important, you need to DM them the morning of the call and you need to say to them, hey, Karen, you you still call for our call at 2.30 p.m. today. You need to specify the time. You need to do it in their time zone, obviously, and you need to make sure that they know that this time is when we're speaking today, okay? And you need to do that for all of your prospects the morning of the call. And ideally the day before, you can also just send them a quick message saying, hey, Karen, you are for our call for tomorrow. I don't think I've ever speaking to some, speak, spoken to someone called Karen. If you're Karen, book in a call with me just so I can like meet someone called Karen. Okay, right. That is, okay, that is, we're not done yet. We are onto automations. So we set up a bunch of Calendly automations. This is just one of our trainings in the launch program. And we set up a bunch of Calendly workflows. I'm not gonna go into the details of this, but like this is to maximize the chance of someone actually showing to the call because you've only done a quarter of the job when you've got someone to commit to a call. Three quarters of the work is to get them on the call. So you need to do everything you can to make sure that they show up to the call. And another way we do this is we send a pre-call video. I look absolutely special in this in this video, in this screenshot. Uh, I probably have to record, re-record this at some point. But this is a short one minute 40 video just saying, hey, I'm really excited to meet you. Just a heads up, I really value my time. I really value your time as well. I just want to make sure that you're going to turn up to the call, make sure that you're in a quiet place. You've got a pen and paper ready to go so we can actually get to work and help direct you on your way. This is really important so that this frames the call and frames you as an authority and someone that they need to respect their, your time. And you, I say here, I'm like, hey, look, if you need, if you don't show up, we have a like a one strike policy. If you don't show up for one call, we're never going to work with you. So please make sure you respect my time and show up to the call. And occasionally people will have emergencies, but they'll, but if you, if they've seen this video, they'll tell you about it instead of just not, not showing. So really important to do that. Okay. Next up, we've got the actual sales call framework itself. Now I prefer a multi, a multi call close. Now this is to, this is, this is just so that I can optimize my time. So I'm not spending an hour with every single person I speak to. So I do a 20 minute triage call and then I go on to a one full one hour con consultation call. If I think that person is a good fit for working with me now, really important. If you do a two call, uh, two call process, you have to go back over the information that you've covered in the first tri triage call. You've got to go back over it again. Slightly different for a B2B setting is that, I, again, if you've got multiple stakeholders, you're going to have to maybe have three calls, four calls, maybe, depending on how many layers you need to go deep into the, those businesses. Again, that's up to you as the expert. You need to figure out what that means for you. And this is how we structure our sales calls. So we use what I call the closer framework. Totally stole this from Alex Hormozzi. And it starts by before this framework is setting the frame of the call. This is where you set yourself as I am the authority here. I'm the one setting the pace for the call. And this is this is what is you what you are going to expect from this call. And there's obviously a, a way to do this in a way that isn't uh, doesn't come across as aggressive. Comes across as super um, super natural and low you know low key low friction. You then need to clarify why they're there. You need to ask them, hey, why why did you jump on this call with me? Like, what is what made you want to book in this call with me? And then once they've told you that, you need to label it back to them. You need to say. Cool. Just, just so getting this clear. So you're currently struggling with X, Y, Z, and you want to get to ABC and label it and get them to say yes, or no, it's more of this. So clarify where they're, why they're there, label the problem. And then we want to go through an overview of their current situation and past experiences. This is discovery. And then the way I do that, as soon as we've really uncovered, okay, well, this is the significant pain that they're in. This is the problem. And I'm like, okay, yes, I actually, in my head, I'm like, logically, this is someone I can help. I then say, hey, 
really sorry, don't have enough time today to really dig into this, but I think you'd be a really good fit for what we do. I think I can really help you. How about we book in another call? Really, really, really important. You book the call on the book, the second call with them on the call. You get them to commit. You get them to accept the calendar invite on the call. You do not let them go off the call to book it, book it again. You book it on the first call. You book them into your calendar. You agree on the time, send them the calendar invitation, get them to uh, get them to accept the calendar invitation. So it's in their calendar and we are Gucci. OK, then you need some rules and a sales script. We obviously have this. <laughs> my our sales call training is multiple hours so we're not going to go into this today but you need some sort of a process to take people through and you need some rules sales is both a skill and an art but it is a process a predictable process that you need to take people through and to make sure that you follow that process you need to follow some rules so some rules that i have so we've got first up is relax like get into a bit of a zone, get into, put in, put on some vibey music, get jazzed about the prospect of helping someone help themselves. Second is get yourself in a convicted mind. And you do that by reading and listening and watching some of your testimonials from some of your students. Go and look at the results. Remind yourself that you're super, super, super capable. And then you get onto the call with conviction that you are who you say you are and you are capable of doing what you say you do. Next up, detach yourself from the outcome. Just consider this another rep in the bank. Just have to consider it another rep in the bank. This person may work with you. You need to follow the process to give them every single chance of them working with you. But don't be desperate. No one likes someone that's needy and desperate. And you have to not care. You just have to not care. You have to care for that person but you have to not care. You have to just be like, hey, this is what we've got. We think this is amazing for you. If you want to join, cool. If you don't, hey, we wish you the best of luck. And then finally, a flawless execution of the process. You need to get used to running the process all the way through and not straying from it. This takes practice. One of the biggest things that you need to get into as a salesperson is understanding that every day you need to be practicing your sales skills. It's called, I call it sharpening the sales axe. So what are you doing each day to sharpen your sales axe? What are you doing? Like, what are you actually doing? And like, this is really key. Like it, you have to understand that just like any profession, if you don't practice something, your skills get, get dull. So you have to do that. You need to sharpen the sales axe. You then need to know what questions to ask. So like, what questions are you going to ask people? So we have a bunch of different questions that we ask. There are a bunch of different things. Again, we're not going to go into this, but the key things to understand is that the questions are trying to gather core information that is going to help you put together a proposal and a an argument for them joining what you do. And these are questions about pain questions about their background, question about doubt over their ability or your ability, questions about their financial and financial financial situation and their resource situation, questions about how aware they are of solutions, questions about their desire, questions about their support. So do they have business partners? Do they have spouses that might be involved in this decision-making process? And then questions about what it would look for that like for them if they didn't make a change what are the costs the consequences of them not making a change this is the information the core information that you need to gather on a sales call to be able to then make a an argument that it makes sense and it's logical for them to join you and then finally you need to be able to object against other people's bullshit because what happens is there is there are like three main objections there's money objections, time objections, and uncertainty objections. And all of those are just people's natural fear coming to the fore and them not wanting to make change because change is naturally dis uncomfortable. So people want to stay comfortable. So they do that by staying the same. And objection handling is the process and the art of taking someone through a series of questions that uncovers the onion of blame that they currently have of the reasons why they're not where they want to be. So you need to have objection handling sorted. 
Okay, seventh system is a finance system. You need to manage your cash flow and grow the business and break free. Now, this is a disclaimer. This is not financial advice. This is just what I do. You do whatever the hell you want, okay? This is, this is, I'm not telling you what to do. This is just what I do. I follow the profit first methodology. Now it sounds like a cult and it kind of is, but it, it's just a book. So this is a book by Mike McCallowitz and he is a multi-time entrepreneur who finally figured out how to, after failing in businesses, because he didn't have a method that he followed that paid him as the entrepreneur first. So that's a real, the real key philosophy is this is a, an accounting cash flow methodology where you as the entrepreneur pay yourself first. It involves twice a month going through an accounting process, really easy, quick to do. You have multiple bank accounts set up, so it makes it hard for you to take money out of the places that keeps your tax separate from your operating expenses. Most importantly, it adds constraints into your marketing effort because you end up only having a, a certain marketing budget that you can use to grow the business and it makes you think it makes you think entrepreneurially and creatively about how best to use that budget okay that is your finance process system and then finally you need a delayed gratification system you need to delay your gratification and reinvest as much as possible back into the business because your business needs oxygen to survive. And the most critical part, the, the most critical phase of your business that needs the oxygen, which is money the most, is at the beginning. So the first few years, you need to delay your gratification and you need to wear Casios instead of Patek Philippe's. And this is why I have this on my watch, on my wrist, this, this watch that I've had for years, because I have been obsessed with watches for over a decade, but I have a constraint. I have a rule that I will not buy a luxury watch until I have one million pounds cash in my bank. That is the that is the delayed gratification system that I have built so that I don't fuck my, my money away and waste it on stuff that isn't going to grow my business. So my constraint, my delayed gratification system is that this doesn't happen until I get to a certain milestone. And that milestone is a million cash in the bank. And that's my chopper. I need to go. So those are the systems you need to build. If you want to help, if you want me to help you build them for your business over the next 12 months, DM me on Instagram. The link's going to be in the comments as in the pinned comment or book a call through the link below. And note, we only take on new partners before the 7th of each month. So don't fuck about, let's get to work. And if you want to see exactly how to start generate, generating leads with our one simple ad protocol, here's a full video, video breakdown over there. Okay, see you next time, champs.